All right, today I'm gonna to show you how to do crown molding with mitered inside corners. And we're doing a four inch crown inside a little tray ceiling in a kitchen today. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is measure all the walls. And you want it to be a little bit shy, so you have to take a small amount off. So on this one, 96 and 5 eighths would be 96 and 5 eighths shy. Now on your miter saw, do 35 degrees for the miter and 30 degrees for the bevel. That could be a little bit different than that, but <laughs> this will work fine. It's easy to remember. All right, get a little scrap piece and make your first inside cut. It's always pointing inwards towards the top. And then you flip the piece around and flip the miter to 35 on the other side and make another cut. And that's pretty much what you're going to do with all the pieces of crown for, for an inside corner. Just like that, they'll all look like that. And you're going to save that piece for when you're doing the install later. We never cope the crown. We always cut miters so we can get glue in between each joint, get it nice and tight, and it won't crack later on and have to be re -caulked. So here, if you were doing a piece, you'd cut the first one just like the test piece. Put your tape measure up, mark the cut for whatever the mark was on the wall, flip the piece around again, flip your miter around to the other side 35, and make the cut. Then you write the wall measurement on the back of the piece of crown so you know where it goes when you get inside. Pretty easy. So when you're cutting the crown flat against the fence on the saw, every cut should be the same. If you're off just a little bit on the crown, the, the pieces don't line up. So every time you cut a piece, you want it flat against the back the fence, and it should all line up like this. So that way when you install it, it should look like this. Now, take another scrap piece, and you're gonna to wanna to make some shims. So just cut it flat, do about five degrees, cut it again, Cut it flat, then back to five degrees, and so on, until you have a few of those. All right, we got all our pieces cut. We marked the back of the pieces of the crown according to the measurements that were on the wall, so we can tell what piece goes where. And now we'll take those test pieces, line up the corners as best we can, and nail it off. And we leave about 10 inches from the inside corner from the nails so we can still work with it. It's not done yet. So we'll get this piece lined up as best we can, nail it off, and then we'll do the piece behind us with the testers again. And then when you do the two side pieces there, you don't have to use the testers anymore. You just pop those pieces in. And before you put those pieces in, uh, you glue them. So everything is glued together. And then we'll show you how to get the corners nice and tight in just a second here. All right, we have both walls done now. That wall, the opposite wall. And we take this side piece here, put glue on each end, and then fit it in there as best we can. So you just want to get it as close as you can. If there's a little gap at the top or the bottom, don't worry about it right now. Just get it as close as you can, and then get it nailed off. And we also leave 10 inches from the ends on this piece too. We'll get this one in and do the other side. All right, with this side in, you want to do the shims now before the glue dries. It dries pretty quick. So you take those little five degree shims we cut, take a chisel, I use a DeWalt one because it's got a lot of leverage, a little bit longer, and you pry the bottom, stick the shim in there, pry the other side, stick the shim in there until they line up good, and then break the shims off. You do the same thing on the top, and then you take your chisel and hit the shims a little bit until they go past the edge of the crown molding. That way when the caulking is done, you don't see those shims anymore. All you see is a nice tight corner. So here you can see I've done it and the shims are up there on the top. And it looks good. All right, three sides done, one side left. We do the same thing on this piece. Put the glue on each end, fit it in there and nail it off. Then you do the same thing again, leaving 10 inches from each left and right side. And then you can work those shims in there and it's ready for the next step. All 
All right, it's all up. In a regular room, you don't have to do this, but on these tray ceilings, you want to check the bottom and make sure it's even all the way around. And if it's not, just pry it down a little bit with the pry bar. All right, here we have one nail sticking out. You're gonna hammer that sucker back in, and then you're ready to fill all the nail holes and do the caulking. All right, after all the nail holes are filled, you wanna do the caulking. You caulk the top and the bottom. And uh, the bottom I usually caulk pretty thick and then cut it back in with the wall color after it's done. I, I've tried the laser line where you put a piece of tape and caulk it and pull it off and it doesn't seem to get enough caulking in there. It'll crack later on. So I like getting it thick and just cutting it in by hand afterwards. So we'll caulk all the way around, caulk the corners and then wipe the corners with the rag so there's no excess in there and it looks nice and tight. And then it's ready for paint and you're done. That's it, it's all set, the whole room is done. Pretty easy, right? Once you do a few rooms, you'll really get the hang of it and it goes really quick. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them below and visit crownmoldinginstaller.com to see all our videos. Thanks for watching.